Good morning. So I decided to call this story, as I've told so many times. Uh, screw you, Ferris. I've earned my day off. <laughs> Slash, my mom loves me. And uh, <laughs> this story takes place a couple years back. I was in a really bad place. I'm sure most of you have been here before. I never want to repeat it. Uh, tenth grade Spanish. And um, I go in on this particular day, and uh, we have a substitute teacher, Mrs. Fort. Mrs. Fort's about 72 years old, so she's about 10 years past the age of retirement and, you know, uh, even further past the age of caring. So this is going to be a really easy day. So we go in, simple enough assignment, finish the worksheet, rest of the day is yours. So I sit down at my desk, I'm working on the assignment, finish it, enthusiastically throw it on my pencil, and I go to get up. And as soon as I go to get up, I feel this sharp sting in my left knee. Instinctively, I don't think about it, just reach down and cover it. And a couple more seconds go by, and it goes from a sharp sting to the most blinding pain I've ever felt in my life. So I sit down. Now, not only am I sitting covering my knee, but I have my right hand balled in a fist, and I'm biting my knuckles like this. <laughs> and people are starting to look at me from all over the classroom. Yeah. Everybody notices this, except my friend Aaron, who I'm working on the assignment with. And um, I decide to take a quick peek at what it is. I lift my hand up, and blood squirts out of my knee. So I immediately slap my hand back up. <laughs> just in denial, did not just see that. <laughs> and I, uh, I calmly get up. Aaron still hasn't noticed. I get up, I waddle over to the chair next to the teacher's desk. And I said, uh, excuse me, Mrs. Ford, I, uh, I could use a Band-Aid. And she goes, uh, why? So I didn't bother saying anything. I just lifted my hand and showed her. I said, pictures worth a thousand words. It must be even better to see it live. And I, uh, this is a very cruel thing, incidentally, to do to an elderly woman. Please don't try this. <laughs> she didn't say anything either. She just screamed. And <laughs> this woman got up and flew over to the intercom. I mean, legitimately. I've never seen anybody, much less 72 women, move that fast in her life. So she gets to the intercom, slams on the button, and just screams, We need a wheelchair! Now, everybody has their attention by this point. Like, oh, what's going on? And um, everyone's looking at me, like, Oh my god, what happened? You're bleeding. And, you know, people want to see it. So I'm like, Yeah, sure. And, um, as I'm sitting down, my friend Aaron finally realizes, he freaks out, he's like, oh man, what happened? Are you okay? Like, let me get you some paper towels. Um, he was like, what's the matter with you? And I hadn't realized it yet, but as I went to go sit down, I finally saw what the problem was, besides the fact that I'm bleeding. Um, the desks were much like the ones we have in this classroom here, only there was a metal bar on the side to hold the desk and the chair together. I was sitting next to Aaron's desk, and his metal bar was broken. So when I got up, I turned, the thing sliced me right across my knee. And it sliced all the way down to the kneecap. And um, I was really, I was really bleeding a lot, really hurt. And um, Aaron's bringing me paper towel, but I couldn't think about anything else besides all the blood on the floor. And I was like, wow, I really should wipe that up. That's just not fair to the janitor. And um, I'm wiping up the blood on the floor. And I'm like, oh my God, Brendan's lost it now. And um, after a couple of minutes, the uh, school nurse comes upstairs. She wraps up my knee, everything like that. I'm on the way downstairs. And all I can think is, my poor mother is going to get this phone call and going to have to come and pick me up. Now, a side note about my mother. My mother, is uh, her birthday is coming up in February, and uh, I want to buy her a cape because she really is Wonder Woman. Uh, my mother is the office manager of my father's accounting firm, uh, mother of four, cleans, cooks, uh, and sometime in this mess found um, the opportunity to go back to school, get her bachelor's degree, and graduate magna cum laude. So my mother is really, she's uh, really out there. She's amazing. And um, she gets few and far days off. And um, today she wanted to go to the nail salon, go shopping, so that she had to pick up her son uh, from the nurse's office because he you know, cut his knee open. And uh, after she shows up, comes and picks me up, um, the uh, principal comes and gives him a please don't sue speech, and we're on our way to the hospital, the emergency room, and uh, we know that I get to spend some bonding time together. So I'm the last of five kids on a side note, and I always have this thing where I guess I'm the most attention-seeking one. I kind of want that reassurance from my mother, like, you know, I love you, I'm so proud of you, so on and so forth. So it's kind of nice that we get to spend time together, and we're on the way to the emergency room, and I'm feeling sorry for myself, like, oh man, poor me, look at this knee. Then I get there, I see people with real problems, like the construction worker who started his day with two hands, ended it with one by 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was thinking, this is you know, pretty bad. I'm okay in that regard. So I go upstairs, and the doctor who's stitching me up, he looks too young to put air in my tires, much less be stitching me up. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a really cool guy that he's stitching me in. I remember Billy Madison was playing on the TV, and he was laughing so hard his hands were shaking, and he had to stop <laughs> stitching a bunch of times just so that he could like, concentrate and focus. And I'm thinking, sure enough, that after this experience is over, my mother's going to ditch me. She's going to go on with the rest of her day, get her nails done, go shopping. And she decides not to. She decides to bring me with her, which is really nice because I'm like, you know, we get to spend time together. We're talking and things are really cool. And I'm really starting to get like a little reassuring feeling for my mom, which sounds silly. It's just that it's kind of hard to explain. But uh, we've always been close, but she doesn't really show it a lot. And it's kind of just nice to get that reassuring feeling. So she brings me to the nail salon and all these older women are there. And they're looking at me like, oh, you poor baby, what happened? Did somebody hurt you? And um, <laughs> I go back. 
with my mom. I'm thinking, oh, she's totally gonna ditch me now. And uh, you know, she didn't decide to go shopping after that. She brought me back home. You know, she cooks for me. She sets me up. You know, gives me some pancakes. Everything's you know pretty good. And I'm laying out there, and we get to kind of hang out. You know, we spent the rest of the day hanging out and just doing our own thing. And it was really nice because just the two of us home. It was only noon by this point, and. Um, it was just kind of nice to spend that time with my mom. And I guess when I was thinking of this story, I've told it a bunch of times, but uh, I started to think about it more and more, especially after this last year, as uh, a lot of stuff's kind of uh, tangential to the story. But it really made me feel grateful to have a mom like I really do. She spent all that time with me and really took better care of me. And even though she didn't, um, even though she didn't uh, really come right out and say it, I just kind of got that feeling. She didn't have to say anything. It was that intangible feeling of knowing that my mommy still loves me. Thank you. Thank you.